Okay, this is Nassau so Slim Jim again. Uh, getting starting on doing a little bit of porting work on these uh, these budget KO4s. I already took one apart. Uh, I do want to say before you take these apart, there's two things you're going to want to do. One is take pictures of them, so that way you know where all the little brackets and how the wastegates go on, so everything goes back how it's supposed to. The second thing is uh, I got a cheap little uh, engraver. And what you want to do is you want to clock everything. So what I did is I marked the turbo, so all three parts, center section, compressor housing, exhaust housing, hat, for this one has a number one on it. Then I marked, see where it is in this one, like right there. You see there's a little mark. Well, let me be careful of this, so I don't want to damage it. I did the same thing on the corresponding side. Put a little mark where it's going to meet up with. And I did the same thing over here on the exhaust side put a little mark so that way I can make sure everything clock and goes back together the way it's supposed to. Um, you don't want to put these turbos together and then have the oil oil dump going up and the, the coolant line on the wrong side and all kinds of crazy stuff. So it's always good to make sure you have everything where it's supposed to go. Uh, I also want to take another look at these Rotomaster turbos. Um, you know, like I said the, the machining on them has a little bit of scratch right there, but for the most part, Looks pretty good. I don't see any uh, like huge chunks of overcast hanging out. You know, like you see in some of the other ones, uh, you can tell they look pretty clean on the inside. Um, the center section looks pretty good. If you look on the exhaust side, you can tell they actually took the time to balance this versus just, you know, going, oh, it's pre-balanced. Every All the parts are pre-balanced. Put them together and everything will work. Um, I did find on this one, one of the things I'm going to want to do, if you look down on the exhaust side, whoop, there is a little lip right here that's going to impede flow a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clean that up while I'm doing a little bit of, I don't want to say porting the turbo. All I'm doing is just kind of cleaning it up and then just getting rid of that little step right here that goes to the wastegate, which... I felt it's it's where it's the thickest part of the cast iron where there's a good like three-fourths of an inch so I'm not going to be thinning it out in any major spots um, so that's not going to be an issue so I'm going to go ahead and get my camera set up on the tripod and get this going Another reason we're going to be welding this up is a wastegate actuator doesn't open a lot all the time. So if you look at this, if you see right there, the wastegate can actually move a little bit. And when it moves just a little bit like that, it may not actually open the flapper all the way or the valve here. So from that point, if it only opens a little bit, it's looking for the exhaust pressure to push it out the rest of the way. So if we weld it, then from that point, when you open it, it'll actually cause the valve to move with it, making this work more efficient. So I got this set up. I'm running 100% uh, argon on my TIG. I'm gonna be running about 80 amps. Uh, I'm running a number six diffuser cup. Um, I'm not sure how well this is well gonna weld. It looks like it is mild steel So I don't think I'm gonna have any issues with cracking. So uh, let's see what it does All right, 
right, well, got uh, got everything done now. It took me about a half an hour along with doing the video, so that's having to move the camera around in a little tripod and doing all that high-speed stuff. So really, in uh, in the real world, you could probably get each both turbos done in about an hour if you really wanted to. Uh, all the hardware in the turbo was uh, 10 millimeters, so I only need one wrench to take it apart. Um, I didn't need to do anything to the compressor side. Like I said, it uh, the machining on it's really quite good. There was no extra cast I needed to take off. You know, it seems like they did a pretty good job when they uh, when they casted this and did the cleanup and machine work. The center section I went ahead and checked out. Um, everything seems to be pretty good on it. The impellers look good. It spins nice and freely. It doesn't have almost. I mean, you're going to have a little bit of play because you got to have room for uh, for oil clearances, just like you do on a. Uh, Ooh, having a brain fire crankshaft, but it doesn't have any excessive play, has no in and out play, uh, has the same um, cast iron, it looks like it has the, the nickel additive to it, so it should be pretty good for heat resistance. Uh, everything seems to be pretty good on it. Like I said, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been balanced, just got to be careful with it after you take it apart. You don't want to mess up the wheels at all. The exhaust side is done, got it welded up, did the little bit of tiny little modifications. I want to get done to it for efficiency purposes. So now I'm just waiting for the Sierra Coat uh, high temp ceramic paint to come in. Then I can clean these two up, tape them off, throw them in my sand blaster that's behind me, blast them up, take tape off, put new tape on, uh, clean them with uh, virgin acetone and get them painted, but that's going to be another video. Uh, so for now, if you got any questions, comments, or concerns, as usual, leave them in the comment section, and I'll get to you as soon as I can.